Alrighty, people. It is tech time. That's right. I'm your host, Seb Luca, otherwise known as Sebastian Lucas and Tech Time Episode 1. The revamped United in Tech podcast is about to begin. I want to say begun, but we've begun. It would have not made as much sense through that. And we do have to be somewhat technical when it comes to our tech time endeavors per se. Let us just change that back to front, front to back. I'm vaping y'all. You know where it's at. So look, guys and girls, stay tuned as we bring you the latest news and reviews from the world of tech. Join us as we dive deeper into this exciting world and bring you all the relevant information. Okay, so that being said, I I need to be brutally honest with you all. We got some uh, breaking news, breaking news on the cards it's been out now for a number of hours and i want to get it as the first point of call even though tech time episode one or united in tech podcast number 433 or whatever the number it is um unfortunately i'm going to be using united in tech in relation to a charity name and i don't want to i'd like it associated with but it's not going to be associated with per se the podcast until one day when we can give it some merit in relation to it yeah so tech time podcast episode one official and essentially at the moment it's been a quarterly affair or a monthly affair where i'm just rounding up the major news that's been and should be abused and mentioned to you a lot as pc enthusiasts but with that in mind, this breaking news uh, trumps all of that. It's essentially a trickle down effect. And that's why we really need to take note when it comes to something of this sort of uh, caliber per se of news that we're about to uh, delve into. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, change. And say sup y'all we're not gonna stagnate here for too much longer that being said what's fresh off the press well i'll tell you right now good old intel what's intel done again well uh intel's 56 core xeon wn 3495x processor sets a new world record by beating amd threadripper intel has dethroned AMD is the world champion in processor performance with its Xeon W93495X 56-core workstation processor. The industry standard Cinebench R23 benchmark showed that Intel's processor clobbered AMD Threadripper with a score of 132,484 points which is more than 10,000 points higher than the previous world record holder. Despite having eight fewer cores and 16 fewer threads, the Xeon W93495X, what a name, eh, Intel, managed to surpass the AMD Threadripper's 64-core 128-thread monster 5995WX processor. Although a new world record is impressive, it was achieved under... Yikes! I need to get some uh, visuals happening. Although the new world record is impressive, it was achieved under niche conditions, using liquid nitrogen setups to cool the processor and overclocking it to achieve faster frequencies. However, the improvements in the Xeon's instructions per clock IPC that allowed it to break the world record will benefit Intel's entire processor lineup. Like I said, a trickle down effect including chips for the consumer market in the coming years. AMD's Zen 4 Threadripper chips are also on the horizon and a 64 core 128 Threadripper 7995WX could very well retake the crown before the year is out. So that's something, yeah. So essentially 
if we can go back to here, amazing, amazing stuff in relation to uh, the Intel Xeon. Now this Intel Xeon, the, and it's a synthetic benchmark R23, but it's a well-renowned all core, 100% low benchmark that's off its, off its, I would say, you know, teta, but I'll get in trouble. So I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, for a set period of time, the high frequencies along with the IPS gains, Intel's not mucking around, right? And essentially, they're secretly, I was aware that if the Intel Xeons beat AMD in one specific task that was in relation to a set amount of bandwidth which they could uh, adhere to. And like, it could get a shit ton of bandwidth in relation to transferal. Exactly on what level, I'm not 100% sure. An expert would be able to elaborate. Um, I wish I had one on today. But what it essentially means is that Intel Xeons could achieve this bandwidth at a much more efficient capacity than it took the 64 thread or 64 core 128 thread thread rippers to be able to perform the same task. So where the thread ripper will be buckling and asking for half its core capacity or three quarters of the core capacity to achieve this bandwidth allocation of transfer, which the Intels could do. The Intels, on the other hand, had this other thing up their sleeve where it took only two or three cores to produce what would take three quarters of the Threadripper chip to be able to produce. So regardless of the fact that they've got more cores and more threads, it doesn't necessarily mean AMD's a better choice, especially when it comes to certain workloads. And with that being said, also the general workloads in relation to Cinebench R23 and the status quo has just trampled with how many, with a set amount of cores, with eight cores and 16 threads less, it's just surpassed it. And of course you could overclock these other chips, but they were overclocked when they were attempting the world records in relation to them. They weren't just generalistic runs. Otherwise, anyone would just run through them with their servers and have a world record. So yeah, uh, this is breaking news uh, in our PC scope of affairs because, you know, this will trickle down and hopefully the better the CPUs are at this level and the way they are operating um and the sooner they are operating and the sooner they flood the markets and become a normality is the sooner we get this sort of stuff on a consumer level where they can throw throw at us you know a set amount of cores and threads or um higher steel where we can over flood and oversaturate our software so the software can be you know integrated and made stronger stills um and not just because of lazy engineering but actually because we require more power to produce better and better things for humanity, for God's sake. But yeah, so that's put today's featured game, which is Ashes of Creation, um, on the back burner. So let us pop that before we forget and uh, see what's actually cracking with the Ashes of Creation. So guys and girls, Let's get this started and see this. I've got a video in relation to a part of it. It's currently being developed, this game. So we'll see how the video goes. And at, at a time where they probably will start talky talky, we'll make sure we uh, t tone them down and I can tell you guys and have your focus in relation to the game itself. So this footage that we've got here will be the Alpha 2 tank preview. And yeah, the guys and the girls will be talking about this as well as playing it. Unfortunately, it's only 720p footage. So I shall, I'll apologize about that. Hello everyone and welcome to another Ashes of Creation update today. And that's GM Steven. So yeah, today's feature game, like I mentioned, is Ashes of Creation. Uh, I'll tell you a little about it, frankly. And Ashes of Creation is an upcoming 
MMO game being developed by Intrepid Studios, led by Stephen Sharif, uh, and he's the guild master, he's the game master currently who's going to be running the tank. The game promises to offer a unique take on the classic MMO formula, massive multiplayer online formula, with a focus on dynamic world building and player participation. The game is being developed as a sand park MMO, a mix between the two traditional types of massive multiplayer online, the sandbox and the theme park, and is currently in alpha testing with no official release date. The game is set in the world of Vera, which will be around 1,200 square kilometers in size, with nine playable races, a high detailed character creator and a hybrid class system with 64 different class combinations so i uh, will we'll, we'll go a bit ahead here we'll see if they they get a bit of a move on tank mechanics slash tank beta alpha travel in the game will mostly occur on foot or on normal ground mounts and the game will be powered by like it is now the unreal engine 5 Unreal Engine 5 and moving it over from Unreal Engine 4 has been a thing in relation to this game. It's taken a little longer as a result um, to get the better visuals and much more efficient ability of the team in development to be able to create and work on the same areas at the same time and whatnot, where otherwise in Unreal Engine 4, it wasn't a possibility. So the drawback was moving everything over to Unreal Engine 5. Um, but for future reference, it's going to be a massive plus for the game, even though it's been held back a fair amount of time as a result. The world of Ashes of Creation will be dynamic and changed based on player interactions and actions as well, with the node system enabling players to create and involve towns, cities and points of interest all over the world. Players can hold positions of power in these cities, and the towns will evolve differently on each server. The developers have promised regular content updates and no pay to win elements in the game's shop, which will only sell cosmetic items. That's a good thing. The game has been in development since 2015. And I swear, I swear to the Lord our Savior that this ain't a star citizen, all right? and is inspired by early MMOs, massive multiplayer online, such as EverQuest and newer titles like EVE Online and Arcage. The game is currently in alpha testing with no release date scheduled as of yet. So yeah, you all, uh, it, this is the tank alpha stuff. You can watch this stuff on the Ashes of Creation YouTube channel, official, and it's available in 4K resolution as well. So. Yeah, you all will get the luxury of seeing exactly what the game looks like of this day and age. Although that's not a final thing as well, because there's a lot of polishing that has to get done in relation to the game and optimizations so that the game looks as polished as it can be on an engine such as Unreal Engine 5. You'd hope it would be as well um, to get the best, you know, maximum game play visually visually stunning game out of it and you know like it reminds me of similar mechanics and stuff and it reminds me of like black desert which is really cool but it's got a lot more in-depth potential that otherwise uh black desert will be lacking in its arcade style uh pursuits that it sort of embeds into you so um understand that this will be a sinkhole of hours and time and i'm thoroughly looking forward to the day that ashes of creation is released and yeah guys what can i say intrabed studios ashes of creation so look out for it follow the follow the channel on youtube if you hear about it and upcoming mmo rpgs understand that this is the one okay the others won't amount or surmount to anything that this game is going to produce it's going to rival world of warcraft eventually you hope if it's picked up enough 
in relation to content and the ability for them to create that content. That's why I said they moved to Unreal Engine 5. And yeah, so that's our game featured this, I'd say this week or this fortnight. Um, hopefully we'll get the podcast time. Tech time will be up every week or every secondary week uh, so that we can be all united in tech. And yeah, with that being said, let us move on to something else that I really want to... Um, talk about that's they've just been dropped i've i've ordered a couple of them i've ordered three of them actually i've ordered four of them um for a, a pc build that doesn't exist and or uh someone else may take uh pleasure in utilizing them let me change this up now all righty what's fresh off the press okay y'all so i'm asked all the time what is the best fan out there and now there is a clear winner the arctic p12 max so just to uh sum up the brand is arctic we know and love of arctic arctic has had um the p12s out for a number of years and they're very very economical and cheap but still decently strong and powerful fans especially for the price and for approximately 25 percent more or 20 percent more was the initial retail value of uh increase in relation to the new upgrades the p12 maxes right so you can get a look there p12 maxes well to summarize the features of the arctic pc fan in relation to the p12 maxis or maxes uh they are optimized for static pressure the high static pressure of a fan ensures efficient cooling even with increased air resistance, making it ideal for use on heat sinks and radiators. And that's something that the P12s were lacking in relation to. The P12s miss that mark, but they have a proven fan design. The closed ring fan wheel enables low vibration rotation at high speeds and strong resistances while maintaining high static pressure. They have a wide RPM range. Now, where the old P12s topped out at about 1800 or so, the fan speed can be controlled via PWM using the four pin connector, which they have available to them. Below 5% PWM, the fan stops completely, while above 5%, it is infinitely variable between 200 and 3300 RPM. So it's one of those big boys. It's now pushed it up into the big boy category at 3,300 RPM topping out, um, give or take, uh, margin of error. Designed for performance, the ball bearings allow the P12 Max fan to operate 24-7, even at sustained high speeds without compromising performance or increasing noise. Technical data, the fan speeds range from 200 to 3,300 RPM. Airflow is, and this is another doozy for a 120 millimeter fan, airflow is 81.04 CFM, okay? Static pressure is 4.35 millimeters H20, and the noise level is 0.6 sone. Overall, uh, and we'll see if I've got something else in relation to this. So here we got some uh, viewing, per se, of the Hardware Canuck guys um, with it in action. I, I can't understand it. It's it's meant to be, it's, it's, it's a killer. It's a big boy killer, right, for the price. It is made of cheaper materials, okay, but it can, it can traverse with the big boys. So we'll let this run through. I apologize if, if the fellas from Hardware Canucks are in the scene, but essentially overall, this Arctic PC fan is designed for efficient cooling and performance with a wide RPM range that can easily be controlled by a PWM. The fan's ball bearings allow for sustained high speeds without compromising performance or increasing noise, making it a reliable choice for long-term use. And this is why these basic fans also have a six-year warranty attached with them also. Yeah, so these are the Arctic P12 Maxes or Max. And 
you can get them where you can get them um as remember it's Arctic p12 max okay you got the bionic you got the p12 you got all the variants of the other p's out there that's the max that you're specifically looking for uh the ball bearings here it's got a wider sort of uh segment segmented section for that part there and yeah it, it's got different uh ball bearings in relation to how uh the mechanism operates it's got some extra rubber stops for anti-dampening um material wise still probably a little bit el cheapo but that's what you're paying for 13 dollars us okay i saw of them on special from the us currently for 8.99 us dollars each okay unfortunately through the amazon translation to australian dollars that ended up going through the roof and then you also have to pay for delivery which wasn't per it was like seven bucks per item which did not make sense because they could have just packed them together into one parcel so hopefully once they're available widely in australia they don't cost more than twenty dollars a pop the thing is it'll play into the retail scheme of things where once it's it's established that they play as well as noctuas or thermal takes or whatever you know what i mean then they will cost as much or equivalent to if they are that performance based but no no effing way right no effing way because the material in that is just so shocking on a comparison level they've skimped out on a lot of things that otherwise would make them from 98 percent to 100 percent get me yeah so it's it would be unfair for us if australian retailers try to charge anything higher than say you know 29 30 dollars for one of these maximum right but they do push a lot of air and now the revamp uh pushes a lot of air through radiators as well as through case as case fans okay so yeah enough said there with that being said guys fresh off the press 3d variants of amd so you've got yourself your fans you've got your fans and you need to build you need to build because you've got the most uber terrific el cheapo fans out there so the 3d variants of amd 7000 range of cpus have arrived okay and here is featured the amd ryzen 9 7950x3d okay and have we been excited about the release of these okay but with that being said it seems that amd has launched a new 3d version of their zen 4 cpus with the 7950x3d being the first true consumer heterogeneous cpu featuring a zen 4 core with stack cache and another without the stack cache 3d cache chiplets okay so reviews of the cpus suggest that the 7950x 3d is faster at gaming but slower than the non 3d variant in several productivity tasks like rendering or anything that stresses the cause for a longer period of time okay so cinebench r23 multi-threaded so this is in relation to the xeon and whatnot remember how the xeon got 130 some thousand plus well the 7950x 3d is hitting 35114 here while the 7950x was hitting 38292 and that showcases at double or tr at double almost three times the power consumption I understand this um that the the intel 13 gen 13 900k is borderline at forty thousand overclocked so five thousand higher than these chips and that's something definitely to be looking into because they ain't the top dog of the all on the consumer level or are they okay the majority of reviews suggest waiting for the 7800X3D instead, as it will be a better buy for productivity, while the non-3D variant is better for gamers. However, there are issues with the way Windows handles scheduling for the 7950X3D, and it can lead to stuttering and frame drops in some games. The delay of the 7800X3D by AMD is seen by some as greedy anti-consumer practice as it would have avoided the issues faced by the 7950X 3D. 
But honestly, with their dwindling fan base, AMD needs a reality check when it comes to pricing their products. The current plan just isn't working, y'all. Now, what CPU would I personally buy right now? Either, honestly, what I would buy right now would probably be either a 12900K or a 13700K from Intel or a 5800X3D on AM4 at around 400 US dollars. The 13700K is probably the best all-rounder at the moment. So yeah, y'all, with that being said, this is another fresh off the press topic that has just been released in the last week or so, I'd say. These chips have arrived, finally. And like I said, um, they've skimmed out on one of the ones which should have been released around the same time, which probably would have rained some, shed some dampening effects on the abilities of their pedigree chip. But it's, it's a debate if you actually need those extra cores or not. So that leads us to the end of what I had to discuss today at tech time podcast episode one probably official just sort of just going the casual path into it there is a couple of other things i wanted to uh, mention and that is chat G gpt it's everywhere gpt it's everywhere open ai funded originally one of the co-founders is elon musk open ai chat gpt 3 now we got number four or 3.5 3.5 has been released and on where out of all places our good and trusty old edge or bing otherwise known as bing search edge the browser microsoft is the place where to go chat gbt4 is active and entwined where chat gbt3 was boarded up from any current news upwards of 2021 the year 2021 chat gbt4 and microsoft thanks to microsoft's investment into open ai they've gotten the exclusive on it and the ability to utilize it and harness it with it and the power of the internet current as it is and all relevant information that itself can search in answering your queries helping you summarize your texts and give you the best information possible understand there's some negative publicity associated with chat gbt4 as well but if this ain't gonna bring edge out of the dust then nothing else will and google's gonna have to really produce something special for if i give you some figures in relation to where like facebook was uptaken where say TikTok was the most recent viral app, for example, that had a set amount of users within a set period of time. And it was like, whatever, like if we look it up right now, I'll see if I can find it right now. Cause I know the figure, TikTok, how many users within one month? Okay. So TikTok has over 1 billion monthly active users. So TikTok has over 1 billion active users. But with that being said, the pickup of the app over a period of a month or two, it took before they had 100 million users. Get me? Now, ChatGBT, and not four, but in relation to three, and OpenAI, in two days had 100 million subscribed. Get me? So um, it's not just a fad. <laughs> it's something. Uh, it's something seriously that if you are unaware of, Chat GPT, look it up, please. And with that being said, there's no warm and fuzzy stuff uh, today. Actually, there are. There's some warm and fuzzy stuff we've got as well. Um, so with that being said, save that. Close that. Um, I thought this added one as an extra I might bring into the mix. So yeah, on a side note, on a side note, on a side note, we did receive a legendary score, people, y'all. 
um, on a PC level basis on one of the tech consults I had, 11700KF processor with GDX 1070. Legendary score, which makes us the top echelon. It's a world record. Uh, there's only one person that can possess the legendary score for that particular makeup. But with that being said, I was more referring to ChatGBT and some, you know, artwork and whatnot. So this is AI created artwork and it's AI created artwork by myself. So I am the, I am literally the artist because technically AI, a computer can't own the art, but on a side note, you all, this is produced by my systems that I have running currently. This is not a DALI thing, for example, and or a mid journey thing, which they're great. It's probably a lot more powerful than my crappy art. But with that being said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, there's some images I've got here. So this is just some basic stuff. This is the new, this is the new watermark here that we're using. I've got that sector out and this is the full blown image of it. Um, sometimes it's a hit or a miss, but you know, I like my dystopian gangs running the street and shit like that, you know, looking stuff. You know, here's an, uh, here's a something where I was trying to, uh, suck up, uh, some people's asses and in relation to just, you know, getting noticed because I'm always watching a Techonomics podcast. So with that being said, uh, this is Chris from Techonomics podcast. This was just a randoid, uh, futuristic thing that got done, but here's also similar stuff at the Technus corner. So if we go from here to back to set up, as you can see, y'all, and then we go back over here. You can see what I've been doing here. I've been a little cheeky cheeky and we've been uh, taking the image and just doing different things with the AI where I've been doing a Grand Theft Auto 5 sort of a scheme of affairs. And like I said, it's a hit and miss affair with this. Um, does some weird stuff at times. It doesn't completely listen to me. What? The computers. Uh, the computers both don't listen to me. They're both capable and set up of doing this. One on the CPU, one on the GPU. The GPU is 10 times more powerful. So, you know, you've got like Andrew Tate and whatnot, and you've got Andrew Tate's girls and whatnot. So with that being said, I got my stamp of approval, my watermark on me missus. Um, she's not real, so don't, you know, don't judge me too much. But at the same time, for example, I've done like sh shout outs to my mates. This is General Dodd, otherwise known as, and he is a professional, but he's also an elitist. And because of that, you know, honestly have to, uh, be Starfleet propaganda, catch him if you can, the general, you know what I mean? And these are, I've done like, I've tried to do a couple of, I'm trying to get as much imagery because this is part of machine learning and I have to train my computers on the images base that I want them to produce in relation to facial recognition and whatnot. So because of that, I've got two versions of him, a younger chin version of him and an older chin version of him. Okay. Where it's a bit more filled out. Um, his hair is always like that at the moment. Um, from the like 20 odd images I train the machine on, I then could produce these images, but obviously you have to be able to produce these images and if as, as well by prompting it effectively. But I'm really very happy with this type of imagery that I've accomplished and, um, in a more natural environment and background, they could look, they look really potent, honestly. Here's another, like just mucking around, like, you know, um, you can see it's not as, as, as lifelike, but then there's, for example, some stuff here that we did with the Apple computer. This is a mate of mine who, if we have a look at him per se, well, he's the influent type, an extremely talented and creative designer, different lives, same shit coffee so there's my marketing coming into play and you know you got all these different types of people who all got a cup of coffee around the side there and yeah like um that being said you know little things like this and you can see that this is all about all the artwork that like i'm not the artistic type okay to be brutally honest with you 
I'm not the artistic type and this enables me to have the tools to really produce some really good stuff, but it, it depends on how much down the rabbit hole you want to go. I somehow have to get my hands on a 24 gigabyte, 24 gigabyte RAM graphics card to be able to do exactly what I want to do with one set of one computer at a time. And it's, it's just really unfortunate that it's impossible i think if i'm lucky it'd be about eighteen hundred dollars for a good condition one that i could trust and at the moment selling the couple items i have if i sell them at the top dollar which they should be sold out then i get about fifteen hundred and then i'd have to luck out still so i i just can't do it and the equivalent 4090 is like three thousand five hundred australian dollars and yeah it's 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 fucking arsy, like the way the GPU market's going, especially when it's like, oh, I need it for, I need it for school. You know, it's like, no, I really do need it. And I've got a use case scenario for it. And yeah, it's a shame. If you all want to get into AI generated art and not, not only chat GBT, but check out Dally, D-A-L-E, Dally 2's out, as well as Mid Journey. Mid Journey's great. There's a few others out there as well that are notable, should be mentioned. But with that being said, my name is Seb Luca. Thanks for joining us at Tech Time Podcast number one official. United in Tech, we all are. And with that being said, thanks for joining us at the Technus Corner as well. Peace out, y'all. Bye.